Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo, and it is time for the GBA Season 9 Ultra Sun Ultra Moon Ubers Draft Analysis for the Victorian Shadows. I am very pleased to be back with the GBA for yet another competitive, fun, really just almost meme worthy season there. Because when you start introducing Ubers into the equation, you're going to get some much more interesting uh, outliers. So let's just go over my draft really quickly. Since I was 13th in order in a snake draft, I figured going through my draft would give me an opportunity to give you all some more context for my choices. In addition to showing you kind of my thinking as I was building the draft. Now, uh, this was a snake draft format and I was 13th in the draft order. And so with this format, uh, I knew I was going to get sniped a lot just because of the, the way that things were tiered. Granted, I did not think I was going to get sniped as much as I did because I kind of went into this with two or three backups for each one of my choices in building my team. And the team that I ended up with is not even like on the second or third backup pick for any of my choices except for maybe two, so I'll get to those. But I actually ended up going with Xerneas for my round one pick and that was because I was sniped on Marshadow, I was sniped on Mega Lucario, I was sniped on Mega Mawile, I was also sniped on Evil Tall, uh, sniped on Mewtwo, sniped on Greninja, sniped on Giratina Origin Form, and finally I was sniped on Aegislash. Uh, my main thinking for those original first picks were, okay, I need something that I can breed from this very uh, powerful tier one set. That way I would have a lot more options when I was team building. I ended up going with Xerneas because thankfully there was an event for Xerneas. Uh, well, there were actually a couple of events. And so I have quite a few Xerneas to choose from and Xerneas fills that role of a powerful fairy type very early on as well. Um, granted, in this format, Xerneas is not allowed to run Geomancy, which does take away one of its more potent tools. But with the bands of things like Primal Groudon, Primal Kyogre, uh, Mega Rayquaza, Mega Solomons, some of those things lessen the need for Geomancy anyways. And um, Xerneas is still a pretty potent threat, especially with fairy aura boosting the offense of its moves uh, now for my second round pick uh, I actually decided to go more defensively with that pick especially because I wasn't able to get any of my first round picks I went completely off of my pick schedule and went with Lander Therian form number one that's a great defensive pick just because Lander Therian form will always be drafted in every draft and for once, I'm going to try using it instead of always having to prep against it. Uh, secondly, in this draft format, choosing a Z user is a lot easier, just especially because none of the Ubers can be chosen as Z users. And Lander Therian was one of the few uh, tier two Pokemon besides like Tapu Koko that also can be used as a Z user. So I knew Landers therein would, by picking it, it would snipe a whole bunch of other people, hopefully. I don't have to play against it. And it actually pairs really well uh, with Xerneas overall. Uh, Xerneas, for example, struggling with bulky steel types or just like offensive poison types. And Landorus generally not caring about any of them. Uh, and it is another Pokemon that's been around for a while that I have access to several different natures for it. Now I will run into a little bit of trouble when it comes to hidden power with Xerneas and Landorus, but that is where with the rest of my draft, I need to maintain a lot more flexibility. So, uh, and that's why I was particularly lamenting not being able to get things like Mega Lucario, Mega Mawile. Um, they're just, when you can breed them and you can create them the sets yourself, so much easier. But I do really look forward to not having to face Lander Asterion for the first time in my draft history. You know, just playing draft. This will be the first time that I never have to prep for it, which is great. Um, 
So in the snake format, there were a lot of choices that happen, of course, between that Landorus and my next pick. Um, that's okay though, because my next pick was a Pokemon where I was like, okay, if I can get this, I'm feeling pretty good. And I actually did not get sniped on my third choice, which was Tentacruel. And Tentacruel, I like in specific here, I've actually tried to draft it several times and normally it just gets sniped from me. But in this format, there are so many other things going that, uh, number one, that alleviates some of the defogging pressure off of Landorus. I pick up Toxic Spikes here, and it's most importantly, possibly, not a passive form of entry hazard removal. Against Tentacle, not only do you force other people to bring uh, more speed than they would really want to, which normally makes them lose out on bulk, especially on walls or things that are designed to hold momentum, but Tentacruel is nice because it can function as that defensive pivot or can go offensive as well. Uh, and with the pick of Tentacruel, I actually changed my draft plan and I was like, okay, things that assist Xerneas are going to be getting as many entry hazards as I can on the board and also being able to pivot a lot. So I need to control entry hazards, of course, because Xerneas is susceptible to all of them in some way, even though it's not weak to stealth rocks, but it gets damaged by them, spikes, toxic spikes, sticky web. Not not a fun time for Xerneas. So I definitely need to be able to control that because I think a lot of people will be prepping heavily for Xerneas. And so being able to control that entry hazard game is going to be really important here. Now my next pick ended up being Hydreigon, uh, whom I actually recently used a fair bit in the Valhalla Pokemon League. Uh, shout out to Skyrander for that lead. But Hydreigon in conjunction with Landorus, of course you get a nice U-turn core. Both of them are above average speed, which is great. And Hydreigon can also run mixed sets. Uh, normally I would not draft a Pokemon like Hydreigon if I didn't already have a lot of different sets to choose from just because he takes so long to hatch and level up and evolve. And also some sets do need some sort of hidden power um, but his coverage is good enough to where I don't have to necessarily worry about that and I have a lot of high drag on just because I've been using him fairly regularly since he was introduced so lots of high drag on sets and another potential Z user which is great um, now you'll notice here at this point I have the, the beginnings of my fairy dragon or a water fire grass core so I'm already starting to build those cores in. I, besides Xerneas, I don't have that really big wall breaker. And at this point, a lot of the mega Pokemon that I, because originally I was planning on building around Mega Lucario and Mega Mawile, a lot of the mega Pokemon that I was looking at were really gone. Um, that was okay though. I did decide to go ahead and start planning my mega pick at that point because I didn't want to be relegated to what was left over in the end because with how much I have to breed I really need to have my team set out and situated the way that I want it to be and not just end up picking up things that are left over. If I could go back and do this draft again I probably would have ignored well not necessarily ignored but I might not have drafted Xerneas in round one. I might have um, gone with a different pick in round one but I was just worried about not being able to get something in tier one in that uber tier to where I would be able to use it effectively and for example like a lot of the tier two and tier three are things like ultra beast or the guardian pokemon and I have a good bit of those like Tapu Bulu for example but not enough of them to where I felt comfortable drafting them I would probably be on GTS posting pokemon up asking for the same pokemon and swapping it back and forth until I got the natures I wanted and that's just not a fun game. You're basically just rolling the dice over and over again. Anyways, though, that means that my next choice was Mega Charizard X. There is that double dragons bit with Hydreigon here, but this will provide me a nice physical wall breaker, which can go mixed, admittedly, alongside Xerneas. Um, plus, Mega Charizard X really appreciates the hazard control that I have thus far. Before Mega Charizard, every member that I drafted could either get Defog or Rapid Spin. And so I'm much more able to utilize a Pokemon like Mega Charizard with that level of hazard control. Now, in this type of format, you don't have to Mega right away, I believe is the ruling that we decided on. 
but that doesn't necessarily help out Mega Charizard X too much. Uh, I guess if you want to use your flying resistance against something or your flying or your ground immunity, perhaps. But really, that's just gonna make you more susceptible to Stealth Rocks. So, uh, another nice thing about Mega Charizard X is that he has that dual ability to go offensive or defensive that I really liked in Landorus and in Tentacruel. Hydreigon, not so much. Hydreigon can go mixed offensive, which is pretty nice. But Charizard here really appreciates, number one, Hydreigon and Landorus being able to U-turn and control just the offensive presence to bring in Charizard more easily because Charizard kind of goes alongside Landorus in breaking down the things that stop Xerneas, generally. And Xerneas, of course, puts almost a full stop to the things that annoys Charizard, like those really fat physical walls that don't have good special defense. Uh, after Charizard, I honestly kind of went off the rails in my drafting prep. I knew I wanted to get sticky webs in there, and I also knew, okay, I need to get a grass type, and I need to get more speed. Speed was really, really important for me. Because at this point, I have Xerneas, base 99 speed. Landorus, not that much faster. Tentacool, not that much faster. Hydragon, a little bit slower. And Mega Charizard, not that much faster. So I either needed speed control or I needed to get some more speed. And so that's what led to me drafting Slurpuff next, which was another fairy pick admittedly but i i'm okay with doubling up on fairy types just because they have very few weaknesses and those weaknesses are not common offensive types uh, slurpuff also brings to the squad here sticky web which is great because now perhaps mega charizard doesn't have to run dragon dance or maybe i don't have to run uh, a plus speed nature on my xerneas or Linderous. and slurpuff also gives me access to nice belly drum sets and again it is not a passive defensive Pokemon if I decide to use it that way. Uh, Slurpuff can also utilize Wish, which is really nice, just because some of these Pokemon that I've drafted don't get recovery, such as Landorus or Xerneas, um, or Tentacruel even. So having that ability to pass Wishes, that's just a nice passive thing to have in the background where if I need to replenish the HP, I can. And it also alleviates ar aromatherapy use on Xerneas, then I can just run Heal Bell on Slurpuff and free up a move slot on Xerneas. I do appreciate that. Now after that, I I really wanted to get a steel type. Uh, I ended up going with Fortress next, just because number one, I really enjoy using Fortress. It was on my team when I first moved into the GBA with Cooper's team. Um, granted, I wasn't able to really use it to its full extent in that team, just because I sucked with that team. But I think with this team, I will be able to utilize Fortress much better. Uh, the other nice thing with this is that it gives me a nice physical presence as far as a physical wall presence instead of just kind of having, uh, this one can kind of go defensive or Slurpuff can kind of take those hits. Like Fortress can easily take physical hits barring fire moves. And I already have three Pokemon that easily switch into fire type moves, so that's fantastic. Uh, Fortress will also give me another way to rapid spin, and now I've picked up Spikes. So now I have every entry hazard present on this team, alongside two rapid spinners, and plenty of ways to defog. Um, Fortress also has some really nice tech moves that I think you're more likely to use if you're more experienced with using Fortress. So I'm looking forward to hopefully surprising some people with what Fortress can do too. Now, back to that speed idea, I did not want to rely just on Slurpuff being able to use Sticky Web for speed. So my next couple of picks were more focused around getting speed. Now, for me, I just wanted anything over base 101. That's what I was thinking there. I was like, if I could grab some more speed and also get coverage in that same idea, that would be great. So the next pick is actually the Inshao, which we are allowing Baton Pass in this league. It's just you're not allowed to baton pass speed. Uh, so me and Xiao can get baton pass and baton pass subs or swords dance or anything like that, which is really fun. Uh, it's also not slow and it fake out is a little bit of priority. It's not a lot of priority, but I will take what I can get here. Um, my first speed pick was actually superior that got sniped for me because uh, I wanted that grass type as well. But me and Xiao 
is just something where it really will take advantage of a team that number one doesn't have a ghost type if you don't have a ghost type and me and chuck can just high jump kick its way through your team that's something that you have to prep for and then even then me and Xiao has enough tech moves that you can put on things that are unexpected you're not necessarily always forced to run scarf or ban and an offensive pokemon with regenerator is also really nice because that alleviates that need to really monitor how many times you can use life orb for example uh, in that same mindset of okay let's get another speedy pokemon that really fits into this team i picked up alakazam next alakazam on my team i actually probably should have gotten alakazam before me and Shao. i was very fortunate that it wasn't picked especially because i think it was tier three tier three or tier two and so with alakazam obvious speed which is great but hey, now I have a really powerful psychic type with Magic Guard. And that sometimes things like that are just miniature get out of jail free cards where you can put a focus sash on there. Or you can just go, all right, if I run into this situation, Alakazam is in the back to hopefully save me from that. Uh, but also the thing that is nice about Alakazam is that on top of being speedy, he gets really great coverage and I've used him enough that if I need hidden power, I have those sets bred already so really it's a matter of having the right nature i might have to rebreed the right nature with the correct hidden power but for the more basic ones i have those hidden powers available um, after that i still needed a grass type and i didn't have an electric type and rotom mo was the other pokemon that i actually had again alongside tentacruel very early on in my original draft plan and so i'm able to pick up rotom mo here in my second to last pick uh, rotom mo has really it changed since um, 7th Gen was released. Number one, with access to Defog. But number two, you just don't see it as frequently in Draft League play because of the other options on Electric and Grass choices. Um, with a unique typing and also that nice Levitate ability, um, I hope to kind of preserve that ability to have offensive momentum and volt switch and at the same token all right if i need something to go defensive to soak up scalds or something like that rotom mo can come in there maybe spread some burns of its own and with pain split it can be a little bit more self-reliant as well not necessarily relying on leftovers or wishes from slurpuff and my final pick was really honestly up in the air i ended up going with barbarical because the thought of uh, barbarical support supported by sticky webs which is really entertaining i was also looking at things like Sinchino or cloister just i was looking for something where it's like i want people to have in the back of their mind that they need to make sure they prepare for this because if they don't it could sweep them and barbarical definitely fits that mold um, i like barbarical i've i've wanted to draft it in the past but the idea of utilizing razor shell as your main stab move for the water type eh but now he gets liquidation, which is much better uh, and more reliable for my purposes. So I don't have to worry about missing per se. So that is my team. I definitely welcome your all's thoughts as far as how the team looks, the overall synergy of the team. Um, tentatively, my Z users are going to be Lander, Hysterion, and Hydreigon, just because of the myriad coverage options that both of them get. And of course, their relative speed tiers especially with Lander as like, that's such an obvious Z user. But I really like Hydreigon as a Z user. It just is able to beat the things that normally would switch into it, depending on the Z move that you use. So really, that's the purpose of Z moves, as far as I can see, unless you're going to set up. So Hydreigon is able to do that really well. I could have also chosen Barbarical as a Z move user, but I just didn't anticipate bringing Barbarical as often as I would bring Hydreigon, for example. So that's why I went I think I'm going to go Hydreigon at least. Um, but yeah, let me know what you all think about the team. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did not know, there is a GBA fan Discord server. I will leave a link to that in the description in case you want to get on there and talk to other people about the matchups, what you expect, reacting to videos, just posting random Discord emotes, whatever tickles your fancy. So I'll leave a link to that down there. And I also want to leave just a little shout out here to Envy and Deathly I Am and uh, also 
Tom, who also, he made the draft sheet that everyone was working off of. And I think El Scizor and Envy were the ones helping me keep up on when it was my turn to draft. And uh, I don't know, it's just a really cool group effort to put all this together. And so there will be links to a lot of different people in the description in case you want to check out their, their work or their channels or just you're curious how all this type of cool material gets put together. So be sure to check out those links and look forward to the first battle being uploaded soon. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.